No! Oh my goodness. This isn't flying, this is falling with style. <laughs> to infinity and beyond! Hey guys, how's it going? This is Trey See, I'm back with Genshin Impact Idiot's Guide to Playing Whatever Character. So in today's video, we're learning how to play Shan Yun. So if you guys aren't familiar with the series, I don't know how the series works. I'll let my past self explain how the series works. Because I don't remember how I explained it. And I'm pretty sure my past self can explain it way better than my present self can. Say, okay, past self, take it away. The thing about this series that's gonna be completely different than other people's guides, like other YouTubers' guides and whatnot, is the fact that I'm going into these videos blind with no real knowledge on how to play the character whatsoever. The funny thing is that I'm actually not making this video for you guys. I'm kind of making this video or this series for myself. Hence the title, An Idiot's Guide. Like, I'm the idiot who's making the guide. That's what I mean when I say this series is actually for me. And I'm trying to learn how each character works in this game. That way I'll be a little bit better at this game because I'm kind of a scrub. And then I thought, why not make content out of it? It. It's kind of killing two birds with one stone. Then not only am I forcing myself to learn how to play these characters, I'm also making a guide for you guys to learn as well with me. So this entire series kind of just me learning, and then you guys seeing the process of how I learn, and maybe that'll help you guys learn how to play the character as well. That's what I mean when I say this series is going to be a little bit more unique compared to other content creators. Because usually when it comes to other content creators, they are kind of experts. They kind of know how the characters work, like the in and out and everything like that. But for me, I had no idea how these characters work. I'm going to learn on video with you guys, and maybe you guys can learn with me. Yeah, hopefully the series helped you guys out. And when it comes to these type of guides, I'm personally not really a meta player like I don't really try to play for the meta I basically play the characters how I want to play them so if you guys are like looking for like the best guide or guide that allows you to do a lot of damage or basically like meta guides this video series is not really for you and also because I'm kind of a scrub at this game so I couldn't give you any meta tips if I wanted to and I'm trying to get these idiots guys out on the most recent characters first and then once I get the most recent characters out of the way I'll go back to some of the older characters and try to learn them the last video I did animal traveler now I'm doing Shan Yun I was gonna do Chiori at first but I haven't really gotten to level like 90 yet there's still some like talents and stuff like that she hasn't unlocked so show her true potential and also i can't really learn her character if i don't have everything unlocked that's why i'm doing the second most recent new character in this game shan yun and also when it comes to the idiots guide i don't have every single character unlocked in this game so i'm only gonna do the characters i have and if i ever get to the point where i finish all the characters then i might start doing characters i don't have for the most part all my guides gonna be like waifu characters because waifu is all i have like i basically a waifu collector make it easy it's just a drawing but anyways enough rambling let's get into it let's learn how to play with my wife shan yun huh? Alright, so first things first, my Shen Yun is not really maxed out. As you guys hear, my talents are only like level 2. Yeah, the first thing I like to do is start off with learning how the talents work. Now, this is like the main thing, or the main part of the characters. The first thing first is a normal attack. He does 4 attacks dealing animal damage, basically like every single catalyst character. She's doing elemental damage and not normal damage. Yeah, and also she has a charge attack and does animal damage as well. And a punch attack also does AoE animal damage, so nothing new. Like, it's basically the same thing as for like most characters, or at least most catalyst characters. And these are her like skill attributes, which for the most part for us newbie players these stuff don't really matter too much it basically is like percentages when it comes to how much damage she does for her attack so even though i said it doesn't really matter the one thing when it comes to shan yun that you kind of want to look at is the plunge damage and that's because shan yun's kit is revolved around plunging that's basically like the main thing you want to look at so her plunge damage is 61.5 percent i'm pretty sure she's gonna go higher the more upgraded talent and right now her low plunge damage is 123 percent her high plunge damage is 153 percent that's basically the main thing you want to look at when it comes to shan yun and also when you're building a team around shan yun that's what you want to look at when it comes to other characters as well because like i said before shan yun's kit basically revolved around plunging and her elemental burst allows characters to be able to do plunge attack and when it comes to building a team around shan yun you kind of want to have characters that have high plunge damage all right so let's go into the elemental skills so when shan yun enters the cloud below that state in which she will not take fall damage and use sky ladder once she won't take fall damage if she uses her skill and when it comes to shan yun's skill you can use her skill like three times and she does like two or three hops and then after that she's up in the air and you can like do a plunge attack yeah she won't take fall damage when she's in this state and in this state her plunging attack will be converted into drift cloud wave instead if you use her skill you no longer will see like the normal animation for plunging when it comes to catalyst characters like they turn into like a ball and then go down and like do a plunge attack whatever like shan yun has her own unique plunge attack and does AoE animal damage and ends the cloud state and this damage is considered plunging attack damage. So I'm assuming there's 61.5% in this skill attribute for like the normal attack. I think it was referring to could be wrong maybe it could be like the low and high plunge damage but i think they're talking about the regular plunge damage but yeah each use of the sky ladder while in the state increases the damage and aoe of the next drift cloud wave All right, so every time you do a hop you do more damage. That's what I think it's saying. So that's interesting. I did not know that. I didn't even know that like, you can do one hop and then do a plunge. I kind of want to try that out and see if that's even possible. And when it comes to Sky Ladder, it can be used in mid air. Chan Yun leaps forward, dealing animal damage to targets along her path. So I think when she hops or jumps, like I don't know, <laughs> she's not really a bunny. She's like a crane. So I don't. She doesn't really hop, but when she does her jumps. I think it does damage as well. Could be wrong. I think that's what it's saying. So I gotta test that out and see. But yeah, during each cloud, the rest state, 
Xianyun enters Sky Ladder maybe yield up to three times, and only one instant of Sky Ladder damage can be dealt to one opponent or any one opponent, whatever. So she can jump three times. I'm assuming what it means that when it says that it can only do one instant of Sky Ladder damage, meaning that it can only attack once. Like I'm talking about like the hops, the hops can only do like damage once. Could be wrong. Like I said before, I gotta test it out and see. But I think that's what it's saying. And also, if I get anything wrong in this video, feel free to correct me. As before, I'm not really an expert when it comes to this game, so yeah, I don't really know how to play these characters. So I'll definitely take any tips I can get. Like definitely leave any tips you guys have when it comes to any character I'm, I'm doing a guide on in the comment section below because that'll be very helpful for not only for me but for like the new people who are playing this game and watching this video. Yeah, that'd be awesome. If you guys can do that. But anyways, if Skylight is not used again in a short period, the uh, state would cancel. Okay, so yeah, basically if you hop once and then you don't do the skill again. It'll be cancelled and it'll go back to cooldown, so nothing crazy. If Xianyun doesn't use Drift Cloud Wave while in this state, next cooldown of White Cloud at dawn will be decreased at 3%. Okay, so if you don't use a plunge attack at the end, the cooldown of the skill will be decreased by 3 seconds. So this is really good for when you're just traveling and you're not really fighting anything. It makes it so the cooldown will be 3 seconds less, so you can use it again really quickly just to hop around and travel faster. That's kind of cool. And also a little thing down here, don't shake Cloud Retainer's hand too tightly. Paint are adept at gripping. Cloud Retainer or Xianyun be gripping, man. Nice. Like that one meme where like, the guy is saying like that blank is gripping or something. <laughs> I don't remember exactly what the meme is, but it's kind of funny how they added this at the end there. But it's canon that Shan Yun do be gripping. <laughs> yeah, boy. I don't even know what I'm saying, man. But anyways, we went to the skill attributes, skill damage. The skill damage, I used to be for my talent only level 2, so it's going to be very low. But this is like the skill damage and the drift cloud wave damage. So while depending on when you hop, the damage changes, I think. So I think if you only hop once and then you do a plunge attack, it does like 124.7%. If you hop twice, it does 159.1%. If you hop three times, it is 300 162.9% I could be wrong but that's kind of cool I did not know that and as for the cooldown normal cooldown is 12 seconds and if you don't use a plunge attack it decreases by 3 seconds that's 9 seconds if you're just using it to travel around I do think her cooldown is kind of way too long I would like it to be at least less than like 10 seconds it would have been great if they decreased the cooldown to 9 seconds and then if you don't use her skill it will be 6 seconds for just traveling around like I feel like that would be perfect but it is what it is she's a very niche support character she's mostly used for like shredding like animal shredding whatever that is I think it decreases Increases enemies defense when it comes to animal. I could be wrong. They also is kind of known for like her healing. Only when she gets to like C6 is when she can be a DPS character. Okay, none of us are getting her C6 anyway, so it doesn't really matter. But yeah, when it comes to her elemental burst, she brings forth a sacred breeze that deals AoE animal damage and heals all nearby characters based on Shen Yun's attack. Shen Yun scales with attack. I don't have like attack artifacts and attack percentage weapon for her. Like, I don't know why I thought that she scaled with HP. <laughs> I'm an idiot. So I'm glad I'm doing this guide. Like I'm learning how to play these characters. But anyway, she also summons a star wicker mechanism and when it comes to star wicker it continuously follows the active character and periodically heals all nearby party members based on Shan Yun's attack. Like I said before Shan Yun is kind of used for her shredding and also for her healing and also her ability to make it so other party members can do plunge attack. Like overall Shan Yun is kind of more so of a support character. So it's kind of cool how her burst heals the active character and the entire party as well. That's really good. It's kind of a pain having to heal characters one by one so Shan Yun can do it all. She's kind of similar to Jean in that Jean's burst also allows her to heal the entire party. Then we get back to Shen Yun, she starts with 8 stacks of Adepto Assistance. While Adepto Assistance is active, nearby active characters in the party will have their jump height increased. So like before, like her whole kit is basically about allowing other party members to be able to do plunge attack. So if you use her elemental burst, characters will jump a lot higher than normal. That way it allows them to do the plunge attack. So it's very fun, like even though Shen Yun is kind of niche for like certain plunger characters like the Lu and Xiao, those are characters that are really going to benefit when it comes to using Shen Yun. Her kit can be used for anyone, like every character can do plunge attack. Honestly, so even though she is kind of like a niche support for those two characters, she can work with anybody, like really. If you want to build a punch team with the Traveler, you guys can do that. Like, that's what I'm probably going to do. It doesn't really matter. The Traveler's punch damage is probably not as high as the Luke and Xiao, but who cares? Like, it's, it's basically all for fun. If you want to min-max and play for the meta, then yeah, you only use the Luke and Xiao with her. But when it comes to just playing for fun and whatnot, like, this game not even that hard. Like, you don't really need the best characters or the meta characters to pass content. You can use Shan Yun in any team, really. It depends on how you want to play the game. So if you guys like Shan Yun and you want to use her on every single team, go ahead. Like, it doesn't really matter. If you guys want to use Shan Yun with Gan Yu and Shen He, it'll work. You can find a way to make it work. Okay, when the active character completes a plunging attack, Star Wicker will consume one stack of Adepto Assistance and deal AoE animal damage. Only one Star Wicker can exist simultaneously. Okay, so she starts off with eight stacks, and every single time you do a plunge damage, she loses a stack and does AoE animal damage. So theoretically speaking, 
thinking you can only use this eight times, I think. I never tried seeing how many times I can do a punch attack with her burst. Isn't eight times way too long? Maybe it's talking about the AoE damage it does, like when you land. I don't know, I I'll test it out. But yeah, that's kind of it for her element of burst. And it is like more lore and whatnot, which I'm not going to read. That's way too long. But when it comes to the skill attributes, the skill damage is 116.1%. So I'm assuming this is when you use the skill. That's the initial damage it does. And then the star record damage is the AoE animal damage when you punch down. That is 42.1% damage. And then her healing is 99.1% of the attack plus 636. That's basically the formula for figuring out how much she heals. And for the continuous healing, it's basically kind of half of that. It's 46.2% of the attack and then plus 297, which I'm assuming is kind of HP. Like it doesn't say HP, but it's basically adding the numbers to it. And duration lasts for 16 seconds and a cooldown 18 seconds. So not too bad. Two seconds where it's not active. So it's not bad in the slightest. Energy cost is 70. It's pretty good. Like some characters have a lot higher than that. So that's Shan Yun lovers. We'll take it. Okay, so for Shan Yun's passive talent, Gale Feather Pursuit, each opponent hit by the drift cloud waves from white cloud at dawn will grant all nearby party members one stack of storm pinon pinon i don't know what it's called for 20 seconds so basically we're saying that each opponent hit by the plunging attack from her elemental skill will grant all nearby party members one stack of whatever that is for 20 seconds like, i have no idea what heck storm pinon pinon whatever it is even is and yeah it didn't really explain it so maybe I'll explain it later on they're basically a max of four stacks and these will cause characters plunging damage crit rate increased by four percent six percent 8% or 10% respectively. So yeah, depending on how many stacks you have, it increases by that much. So if you hit like four enemies with Cloud Retainer's plunging attack with an elemental skill, you basically get four stacks for 20 seconds and at most it increase your crit rate by 10%. But it only applies for plunging attack, but for the most part when you're using Cloud Retainer or Shan Yun, you're going to be using plunge attacks mostly, so that's pretty good. And each storm pin on, pin in, whatever, created by hitting an opponent has independent duration. Okay, so what that means is that if you use a punching attack, let's say on two characters, that's two stacks, right? And then you do a punching attack again, and on the two characters, then that's four stacks. But the duration is different. Like after like, I don't know, a certain amount of time, you lose the two stacks, but you still have two stacks left. But now like it's combined all together. So if you keep using Cloud Retainer's punch attack, you can kind of keep this up forever when it comes to increasing your crit rate for punching attack. Yeah, like it depends on how you use it, but for the most part, you can keep it around for a pretty long time. Assuming that's how it works anyway. But when it comes to her other passive talent, consider the Adeptus in her realm. When the Star Wicker created by Stars Gather at Dusk has Adeptal Assistance stack, nearby active characters punching attack, shock weight damage will be increased by 200% of Shine Yun's attack. Okay, so what it means is that if you use Cloud Retainer's, or I keep saying Cloud Retainer, but when you use Shine Yun's Elemental Burst, the Star Wicker creates, I believe, eight Adeptal Assistance stacks. And when it comes to this passive talent, if you have Adeptal Assistance stacks, I think it doesn't matter how many stacks you have. When you just have one, if you have any stack, nearby active characters, punching attack, shockwave damage, it only affects the active character, like the character on the field, not so much the characters in your party. The amount of damage you do when it comes to your punching attack increases by 200% of Shan Yun's attack. That's the reason why you kind of want to build Shan Yun based off attack. When it comes to this, is it only for the active character when you use the skill, or is this like every time you switch out a character, this will be on them? I'm assuming that's the case. It's not so much the character on the field all the time. It basically like whatever character you switch into will have this buff. It kind of makes sense too because you have to use Shan Yun. Like she had to be on the field to use this elemental burst. And if that's the case, then Shan Yun would only be the only character who has this buff. So it wouldn't make any sense. So this passive talent affects the active character. But if you switch into a different character, then they will also have this buff. It's kind of a little bit confusing. Hopefully, I didn't confuse you guys even more. If you don't understand what I'm talking about, I'll definitely leave a comment down below explaining it more. Because the way I explained it, I felt like it was kind of confusing. But also, the maximum down of damage that you can get from this is 9,000. So I can't go over 9,000, unfortunately. I'm sorry, Vegeta. And I'm sorry, Nappa. <laughs> or I guess the original trend translation is 8,000 so I mean technically speaking you need to go over 8,000 but you can't get more than 9,000 bonus damage that kind of stinks but at the same time I feel like it kind of be OP if it can go higher than that so imagine this being unlocked and you're doing like extra 20,000 damage but yeah each punching attack shockwave damage instant can only apply this increased damage effect to a single opponent each character can trigger this effect every 0.4 seconds okay so this talent can only affect one enemy so I'm finding like a mob of like four enemies only one of the plunge damage would do the extra attack so for example if it's like 9,000 only one one enemy will get that extra increase in 9,000 damage and nobody else. That's sort of fair, I guess. But at the same time, it kind of stinks. And this effect can be triggered every 0.4 seconds, which is basically nothing because it takes like more than 0.4 seconds to do a punch attack anyway. So that's basically like nothing. But yeah, that kind of stinks that it only affects only one enemy. But 
Ah, oh, well, whatever. Okay, when it comes to her other passive talent, Crane Form increases gliding speed for your own party members by 15%. So it makes it so traveling and gliding is a lot faster. And also, when it comes to Shan Yun, it kind of sucks that she doesn't have her Crane Form implemented more in her like skills or whatnot and her passive. Like, can you imagine you're gliding with Shan Yun and she turns into a crane? She glides a lot faster. It's kind of cool. It's kind of like how Scaramouche or the Wanderer he had like the unique flying ability. Can you imagine if they made it so Shan Yun can be in a Crane Form and just fly? significantly faster that'll make traveling so much easier and that'd be kind of cool right like when it comes to like animal characters they usually have some sort of like unique mechanic whether that be making traveling faster or just like some crazy new mechanic like for shan yun the punching kit that's completely new and no other character has this kit animal characters are always a lot of fun i always look forward to animal characters because they always kind of change what is possible when it comes to characters that's why i love animal characters and i really hope they will release more animal characters specifically more waifus because that'd be great calm down son it's just a drawing i need a five star animal waifu with crowd control please Shan Yun if you guys kept up with the leaks originally she did have crowd control but they took it out because well it's kind of poop and also I felt like it would kind of be too powerful for her to have crowd control as well as everything else in her kit so that's why they kind of took it out it kind of stinks I wish they kept it because when it comes to waifu collectors we don't really have a really decent crowd control character so even just having a little bit of crowd control for Shan Yun would be great better than nothing I guess but unfortunately they took it out so it is what it is and I'm sad man but yeah, that's it for her talents. So let's look at her constellations. And after that, we're going to test her out and whatnot. Okay, so for C1, it allows her to use her skill one more time, I believe. So nothing crazy. It sucks that they lock these two constellations, but it is what it is. They just basically want you to spend money. But anyways, for C2, after using Sky Ladder from the White Cloud at Dawn, which I believe is an elemental skill, Xiaoyu's attack will be increased by 20% for 15 seconds. So after she jumps, it increases the attack by 20% for 15 seconds. So this effect right here will also affect your plunging attack. That's why it's occurring before for the attack that way you have the benefit of this constellation for the final attack and additionally the effects of the passive talent consider the adeptus in her realm will be enhanced when the star worker created by star gathered that dust has adeptal assistance stacks nearby active characters plunging attack shockwave damage will be increased by 400 percent of shan Yu's attack so originally it was 200 percent now it's 400 percent as long as you have the adeptal assistance stack which for the most part you have eight stacks when you use the skill so basically you have the benefit for eight plunging attack that's your 200 percent increase so that's kind of crazy and the maximum damage increase stack can be achieved this way is 18,000 so originally it was 9,000 now it's 18,000 so basically just got doubled that's basically the easy explanation of what it basically means and each punching attack shockwave damage instead can be applied to each opponent and then yeah the same thing as before and yeah the lock of the water basically it doubles the amount of damage the one of our passives and this one this increases the level of our element of the burst by three max upgrade is 15 so basically every single character out there when it comes to that constellation and when it comes to c4 after using sky ladder one two three times during one white cloud at dawn that will let us state when a drift cloud wave unleashes during that instant hits an opponent it'll heal all nearby party members for 50 percent 80 percent 150 percent of shan yu's attack and it will trigger every five seconds with c4 when you use cloud retains on with the skill depending on how many times you jump and after you hit an opponent it'll heal your party members by 50 percent 80 percent 150 percent of shan yu's attack which originally I don't believe this was here with C4 it allows her to heal more originally when it comes to her kit she only heals with her burst but with C4 you also heal with a skill which is pretty good I'm not sure if it's worth getting the C4 like it costs a lot of money to get C4 so I don't know up to you guys but that's pretty good it sucks that they lock all this stuff toward the constellation but they want you to spend money like said before okay so when it comes to her C5 it increases the level of the elemental skill by 3 max upgrade 16 okay so yeah, same thing as before. And when it comes to C6, so her to C6 allows her to be a DPS character. So you gotta get all the way to C6 for her to be really good when it comes to doing damage. And like, that's so stupid. <laughs> oh my god. But anyways, I like this constellation name. They call her Cloud Retainer. She is her, you know. Okay, so for C6, after Shan Yun uses one, two, three sky ladders within one cloud, blue state, whatever, caused by white clouds at dawn, the crit damage of Drift Cloud Wave created in this instance of cloud river will be increased by 15%, 35%, 70%. Depending on how many times you jump, it will increase the crit damage of her plunging attack by 15, 35%, 70%. Yeah, I see why people are saying how this makes her a DPS character because imagine if a cloud retainer has like, I don't know, like 180% crit damage already. Can you imagine jumping three times and doing punch damage? That's an extra 70% crit damage on top of the 180% crit damage you already have. That's crazy. That does a lot of damage. So I see what people mean when it comes to the season making her a dps character and within 16 seconds of shan yun using her stars gather at dusk with elemental burst white clouds at dawn will not enter cooldown this effect will be cancelled once she has used white clouds at dawn eight times that's crazy <laughs> that's actually kind of crazy in 16 seconds when shan yun uses her burst she can spam 
her skill can won't be on cooldown eight times <laughs> before it gets canceled. That is crazy. And you can use her skill really quickly too. Yeah, okay, so forget about the first part of this constellation. This down here makes her a DPS carry. I see it now, I see it. Oh my god, it's crazy. I mean, it only really applies when she uses her burst, but still, like, that's crazy. And with her burst costing 70 energy, it honestly is not so bad. Like, it's pretty good. Okay, so that's basically about it when it comes to constellation and talents. Apparently now I understand her character more. Definitely pays to read. The whole meme of Genshin players don't read. Same thing with Dragon Ball players. Dragon Ball players don't read. A Dragon Ball fan anyway. Yeah, I'm a Dragon Ball fan and a Genshin player. So <laughs> yeah, I like basically two stacks of me not reading. <laughs> So I feel like those allegations apply to me. <laughs> like, I, I don't read at all. <laughs> this is the first time I ever read Shan Yun's kit. So, yeah, it basically is true. Okay, when it comes to her weapon, I don't know what her best weapon is. I'm assuming anything with attack percentage. Right now, I have Solar Pearl. That's all I have. And I feel like Kagura's Verity could be pretty decent as well. There's no recommendation for this, right? For weapons. Only for artifacts, I think. But what I would put on her, maybe like the crit damage or the crit rates. Like, it really depends on how much I have for each one. But also, like, Dorico Tails, 21.2% is pretty good. But also, another thing that really matters is the skill of the weapon. Like for Old Sworn Eye, increases the elemental recharge by 40%. For 10 seconds after using elemental skills, pretty good. You can honestly use a lot of different type of weapons. I will probably try to focus more on, at least for me anyway, I want her to be a sub DPS character. I'll probably work more towards attack percentage weapons, at least for me anyway, because I want her to be sub DPS while also being a, somewhat of a healer. So that's probably what I'd do. If something like this would be really good for me, or maybe something like this. Dorical Tails are pretty good. Oh, she doesn't really do charge attacks, so maybe not this one, I don't know. So depending on how you want to play the character, is how you want to build them. Even if you want her to be support, you kind of want her to have a attack percentage weapon anyway. Yeah, like that's what I probably do. Like I said before, I'm not really an expert when it comes to this game. Like, I don't know what type of weapon is best for her. That's basically what I think when it comes to me just reading her kit right now, like how I would build her. And my opinion probably might change. I want to play with her character more often, but when it comes to her artifacts, they have some recommendations for her. That's right now I'm running the Verdicent. Verdicent. <laughs> Okay, don't hurt yourself. The verdict, whatever it's called, the animal artifact. You have five pieces on her. I basically just threw on whatever. So this was the recommended artifact, so that's why I put it on her. But you're looking at the recommended sets. Most people are running Verdicent, 41.3% of those people. 21.3% people are running Songs of Days Past, which I'm assuming this increases damage, like punch damage. Oh no, healing. Okay, so this increases healing. So that's pretty good if you want her to be a healer. This one's good if you want her to be a sub DPS shredder. It comes through the four piece set of this artifact. Increases swirl damage by 60% and decreases opponent's element of resistance. The elements infused in the swirl by 40%. Yeah, this is kind of like a debuffing sort of artifact. So you want Shan Yun to be a sub DPS debuffer, then this is probably good for you. If you want to be a healer, you want to run songs of days past and for combination three 11.8 percent of people are running this basically running two gladiators and two shiminawa and when it comes to these artifacts for the two piece set effect they increase the attack by 18 percent which is also a really good one i feel like it's a really good budget one but it's kind of a pain to farming artifacts like perfect artifacts and getting the right main stat they're running two gladiators and two shiminawas allows you to sort of have more options open that you don't really need to farm a certain domain over and over again if you're running two artifact sets you have more options open it's not easier to build the character i guess because you have more options like before so but when it comes to running combination one combination two you have to run these specific artifacts like you don't need to run these two i think there's some other artifacts that increases the attack by 80 percent so you don't have to even do gladiator you can do like another one so yeah like it's not so bad this is really good for like starting and budget players once you get to like the end game you want to run these two depending on how you want to play shan yun but for me personally i'm probably gonna run the animal one. I wanted to be more so of a sub DPS and debuffer type of character but also doing some healing. I don't think I'll be running her as a main healer. And when it comes to the stats, most people when it comes to the circlet, they're running attack percentage. And then crit rate is 11.5% and healing is 7.7% of people. When it comes to Shen Yun's kit, she scales off of attack. You kind of want to build her with attack in mind. But it, like before, it really turns on how you play the character, you know. There might be some instances where running crit rate or crit damage might be better depending on how you use the character. Like you're using Shen Yun as a DPS character. At time that might be better than attack percentage but for the most part for most of us anyway attack percentage is probably the way to go and for the most part none of us are getting a c6 anyway so yeah like she's not gonna be a dps anyway but for the goblet attack percentage 84 from seven percent people pick this animal damage 11.9 percent hp percentage 1.4 percent i'd probably pick attack percentage here as well i probably want to do animal because when it comes to attack percentage not only does she scale off of it and also beneficial for everybody in the party because some of her talents and stuff like that her buffs for the party is scaling off of attack whereas animal damage bonus only affects her and it's not like using her normal attacks anyway so i feel like it's not really beneficial but i can see where it can be beneficial at times for the most part i think attack percentage is probably better and for sans 66.5 percent people pick attack percentage 29.5 percent people pick energy Charge and 1.7% pick 
HP percentage. Say the same thing. She scales up attack, so you want to have attack percentage. Energy recharge, I see where it could be useful when you want to build her burst up quickly and you don't have enough energy recharge, then you want to have that. But for the most part, attack percentage, that's probably what I do as well. But it's also interesting people pick HP percentage. I guess maybe because they need a new or something, they just do something random. Like for example, I kind of do something random. So maybe the same thing. And as for this one, it's basically all the same. But when it comes to the sub stats, I probably focus more on attack and also if I can get some more crit rate and crit damage. Yeah, I don't think there's any healing when it comes to sub stats, right? I think it's just, yeah, it's just like stats. Yeah, I probably focus more on attack percentage. So yeah, when picking artifacts for these two sets, the flower and the plume, you want to look for attack percentage sub stats and also regular like attack. It's like plus attack, you know, not any of the percentages. Like for example, this artifact right here, attack plus 18, something like that as well. Like, you want to look for that as well as attack percentage. But anyways, now that we finished that, let's try out Shen Yun and apply what we learned from reading her talents and constellations and then test it out and see how it works. Yeah, I don't even know what I said in that sentence right there. <laughs> but yeah, okay, so apparently you can do a punch attack at the one jump. Okay, so it is possible. Okay, so I did not know that. I never tried it before. I always did like three jumps. And so you also do it two times then, right? And the one, two, and do that okay so yeah that's kind of cool i did not know that and yeah when it comes to the shortened cooldown if you don't use a punch attack let's try it out so normally the cooldown is 12 seconds so it should be nine if i don't use a punch attack right there uh yeah right there you see that it increased by like three seconds right there if you guys saw the cooldown that's kind of rated for like her skills i don't think anything else is too crazy but also you see her like a plunge animation change she's basically in a crane form whereas if you do her normal plunge attack it's like regular plunging so right here it's like a ball. It just basically switches that. But other than that, that's kind of about it. There's nothing too crazy when it comes to her kit. So let's go test out how she works, I guess. The more nitty gritty stuff. The stuff you don't really see on screen. So let's go fight some enemies really quick. I'll find more of these guys. Clockwork meta or clockwork mecha, whatever it is. I need more of these stuff for sending characters and whatnot. And also upgrading talents. So, so I have right now a rainbow team because I love running rainbow teams when it comes to animal characters. Also, I didn't really talk too much about team building for Shan Yun. It really depends on how you want to run Shan Yun. You can have Shan Yun sort of replace Kazuo on your teams and be that shredder. Or you can have Shan Yun replace your healer and have her be like a sub DPS healer. I think a lot of people run Farina with Jean. So Shan Yun can replace Jean as that healer and shredder. Yeah, like it, it depends on how you want to run them. For me, I'm not really a meta guy, so I don't really know too much meta teams. The only thing I know is that the Farina teams, like you can run Shan Yun with Farina instead of Jean. Or you run Shan Yun with punch characters like Deluke and Shao. So like a pretty good team would probably be something like Deluke or Shao. One of those two, which one you want to run. And you run like a character like Farina. You want a character like Shan Yun and then someone else. Like, I don't know, maybe like a Bennett or something. Doesn't Bennett also increase attack as well? Shan Yun will benefit from the increased attack from Bennett, right? So yeah, you can run like those type of teams, the meta teams. But for me, I kind of like the fun teams. And when it comes to animal characters, I just like to see a bunch of rainbow colors and damages. So I'm running a rainbow team right now. So let's see how this works. I'm not sure if the swirl will turn rainbow. Let's, let's check it out. Let's, let's see. I'm curious. Okay, so let's do this. Okay. All right. Does it change? I think it changed, right? But yeah, this is her, like, no more attacks. And then like, charge attack. I mean, nothing too crazy. So yeah. Hey, you see the swirl damage? I saw, like, the blue. Okay, it's not as flashy as, like, the Animal Traveler where you can, like, see a bunch of, like, colors and whatnot. Let's see if I try to get the flashy colors. It also makes for a good thumbnail, so... That's what I'm trying to do. Patrick, your genius is showing. But it's kind of cool. I like it. Also, I kind of want to check out and see damage-wise. How much the damage increases per hop. Like, if you guys saw the stats, the more times you hop, the more damage she does. Because obviously, the higher she is, the higher her punch damage does. But I just want to see. Let's do one hop. 2008. So let's for crit anyway. All right, so let's try two hops. All right. All right, so 2005. Don't you have to be stupid somewhere else? Uh, 2005. 2500. Or 2500. Okay, so let's try three hops. 5800. So, yeah, it does a lot more damage. You can tell, like, that's a big difference. I believe doing two hops is like 150%, and then doing three hops is like 300 something. 360%. So, that's a huge increase. Like, I think it's like double. So, yeah, it's crazy. When it comes to Elements of the Burst, let's use it. So, you guys will see right now, someone like Yai, I can't do any, like, punch attacks. But, if I use Shan Yun's skill... Okay, let's try to do 8 of these. So, apparently you could do 8. You guys see right there, like, the thing? Like, the little bird? That's the Zamilia she summons. Oh, that was, like, 4. That's 5. 6. 7. 8. Boom. Gone. Okay, so yeah, we can do it 8 times. 
and it's gone after that. And every single time I punch down, it does that animal shockwave. So that's what it's talking about right there. Shan Yun, her normal attacks are not really getting crazy. Animation wise, it's pretty fast. Like Yai's feels so slow. I don't know why. And like her twirl. Yai's twirl makes it feel so slow, but Shan Yun is pretty quick. And you guys see like the arrow going down. That's basically the artifact, I think. Doing the shredding. Yes. The enemy has like lowered 40% resistance to elemental to damage. Uh, fortunately, you don't really see like the swirl taking the colors of the elemental damage, but that's fine. Now, I think that's kind of like the nitty gritty when it comes to Shan Yun's kit. The hidden values you don't really see. I guess I'm gonna try doing the rainbow thing one more time. See if I can try to get that. The perfect thumbnail shot. If I can't, then it is what it is. Okay, so let's try it. So let's do this. That. Okay. Ah, uh, unfortunately, it doesn't really work. <laughs> Look, it looks cool, right? Seeing all these colors and whatnot, it's cool. Alright, this is Shan Yun using her, you know, burst. Instead of having someone else punch, this is her punching. So yeah, you guys see right here, this is her normal punch animation. Ah! No! Oh my goodness. This isn't blind, this is falling with style. Great, it's gone. Man, I wanted to do the burst with the skill and see how much damage it does. I guess I'll try it again. So right now, when I'm trying to build her burst, it honestly, not so bad. I regain a decent amount of like energy. Maybe because I'm running a rainbow team, that's why. But yeah, I'm getting a decent amount of energy back when using a skill. It does take a while, but the thing is, like, Shan Yun isn't really built correctly. Yeah, once I build it correctly, it should be a lot easier to build up her burst and make it so I can burst more. Okay, so let's go. Let's track this guy. And then this way. Alright, so let's do this. Okay, I'm gonna do this. Alright, so I don't know if that did more damage or not. Yeah, it's so cool how you do it like eight times. Man, I just love playing with animal characters. They're great. Also, another great character you run with Shan Yun is Sucrose. Or like another like cow control character to make it so when she do a punch attack, all the characters are gathered in one spot. It makes it a little bit easier to do damage on everybody. You run a cow control character and then group them up and then do Shan Yun's jumping ability or whatnot. Let's test out this combination and then we'll call the video quits. The video is super long. I'm not sure, can I group these guys? I guess find out. Alright. Can I group them here? Uh, I guess not. Okay, so let's do this. Okay, so let's group them again. Do this. And then we do Shan Yun's skill. And everybody's like grouped up. Okay, never mind. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's another bad thing about Shan Yun's elemental skill is that her targeting is random. Yes, all right there. I have a bunch of enemies kind of grouped up right over here before. But there's one enemy like all the way out here by himself. And Shan Yun targeted that enemy instead of the grouped up enemy. That's like the bad thing when it comes to Shan Yun. I kind of wish that you can sort of select where you want to attack. I guess it is what it is. You can't even do anything about it. According to MiHoYo or HoYoVerse, that's how they wanted Shan Yun to be. So yeah, it kind of stinks, but oh well. But anyways, kind of this video. Hope you guys enjoyed. Hopefully this video helped you guys out on learning more about Shan Yun. Because it definitely helped me out a lot because I did not know how to play Shan Yun at all. And now I feel like I know how to play her character now. And then in a few days, I'm going to forget everything. <laughs> and then be confused on how she worked. Wow. He's right. That's basically how it's gonna be when it comes to this series. I'm gonna learn how to play a character and then just forget everything the next few days. <laughs> but I guess I can always come back and rewatch this video, I guess. Or I could just read it. I think I'm gonna be sick. But then again, I don't like to read. But if you guys want more Genshin Impact Idiot's Guide on playing whatever character, definitely hit the like subscribe button. I plan on doing more of them. The next character I'm doing is gonna be Chiori or something like that. Yeah, hopefully by then I'll have her built. If not, then I might do someone else. I don't know, we'll see. I wanna know, I said Farina. Farina was gonna be the next one. I really wanna learn Farina, so I think Farina will be the next one and then Shiori afterwards. Or maybe I'll do Arca, whatever her name is. <laughs> the, the new character coming out in 3.6. Maybe I'll do her instead. And then go back to Shiori in the future. I really like Shiori. She wields dual swords and I'm always a fan of characters that wield 
dual sword so i definitely want to learn how to play her because yeah, she looks really cool if you also get interested in my genshin impact idiots guide video thingies or you're interested in my genshin impact content in general i upload every single saturday that's free time check my channel if you're interested but anyways that's kind of it hopefully i enjoyed hopefully this video helped you guys out like I said before if you guys have any questions on how to play shen yun i'll try my best to answer it or if you guys have any like questions on what you guys should run when it comes to shen yun i'll try my best to answer those as well like I said before, I'm not really a meta player. I'm not really an expert when it comes to this game. Yeah, like, I'm basically learning with you guys. I'm the idiot in the title of this video. I'm not really the best when it comes to this game, but I'll try my best to answer your questions, sort of. Or maybe you guys can answer my questions. I don't know. Like, probably some stuff in this video where I got wrong. So maybe you guys can help me clear that up. Or you guys can give me suggestions on what I can run for Shen Yun. Or even better, if you guys can help other people with questions on how to play Shen Yun, that would be great as well. Especially since I'm kind of a noob at this game. So yeah, we can all help each other, you know? But anyway, kind of, hopefully I enjoyed. My voice is kind of dying, so yeah, I kind of want to end the video off, and this is getting super long, so yeah. Anyways, comment, hope you guys enjoyed, and yeah, thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you guys later.